will now be recorded. Good evening. Uh, this is the Horowitz Planning Board for Thursday, the 17th of December, 2020 at 630. This meeting is being held via remote participation only. Access is available through gotomeeting.com and live broadcast on channel 18. You can join from your tablet or smartphone at global.gotomeeting.com slash join slash 4989313357. You can also dial in using your phone at 408-650-3123. And the access code is the same, 498-931-357. So, uh, call to order is pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Harwich Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that public can adequately access proceedings as provided for in the order. I'd like to do a quick roll call uh, vote of the members present. Duncan Berry here. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick here. David Harris. David Harris here. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland here. Mary Mazlowski is not here. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson here. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse here. Bill Stoltz. Looks like Bill is not here. <laughs> so uh, the interim town planner suggested that we hop to the um, items that are seeking continuance or requesting continuance immediately which are items C and D. Uh, Charlene, did you want me to reopen these, read them, and then close them? You, you do need to reopen them. All you need to say is the title, so PB 2020-26 Royal Apartments, LLC, and PB 2020-27 uh, uh, Next Grid Inc. You don't need to read the whole thing because you've already read those into the record, but you okay. do need to open both of those hearings. So this is to open PB 2020-26 Royal Apartments LLC as owner. Uh, the property we discussed previously and the hearing was continued from November 19th. Uh, the applicant has requested a continuance to January 12th, 2021. Do I have a motion? Move to, move to continue. Move to continue 2020-26 uh to january 12 2021. do i have a second no earlier than 6 30. right so no earlier than 6 30 at a day certain second. second i agree second with mr chadwick so uh motion to continue roll call vote duncan Barry, aye craig chadwick craig chadwick aye David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. So we have continued. So item number PB 2020-27, Next Grid Inc. Uh, also had a hearing that was continued from the 19th of November and has requested a continuance to the 12th of January, 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. No earlier what? than 6.30 p.m. No earlier than 6.30 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Rouse. Uh, roll call vote, Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, I. Alan Peterson. Alan, Alan Peterson, I. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, I. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we now move on to uh, uh, 
Item A, P 2020-30, Starlight 4 LLLP owners, William D. Kroll, Esquire, representative, seeks approval of a use special permit with waivers for a residential accessory structure with bedrooms. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich sections, 325-09 and dash 51. Property is located at 14 Wimbledon Road, Box 14, parcel X2-2 in the R-L zoning district. Mr. Kroll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Attorney William Kroll from Harwich uh, Court uh, this evening representing Starlight 4 LLP, um, which is really a, a family from Colorado with a number of children um, that need bedrooms. So uh, I also have here with me tonight, uh, Dale Nicola um, from Encore Construction that would be doing the building um, portion of this. The petitioner has an existing garage um, that Mr. Nicola uh, constructed in 2013, um, a garage with two bedrooms above. So that's already in existence. Um, and then in the interim, the town adopted this bylaw for a detached accessory residential dwelling uh, structure, sorry, with bedrooms. And the building commissioner saw fit to say that he wanted to refer this for a special permit to the planning board. Um, so that's why we're here this evening. What the petitioner seeks to do is uh, to take the existing garage uh, space on the first floor and convert that to habitable space and then as you can see from the plans we submitted, uh, the dark uh, portion, uh, that's the new addition. That, that would be new garage space on the first floor. And on the second floor above, it would be two more bedrooms. So we basically um, would have, uh, let's call it a carriage house with four bedrooms um, and still a two car garage on the first floor where you enter in from driveway. Uh, so that's what they're seeking to do. The new structure would um, still meet all of the setback requirements and, uh, would also be well under um, building coverage and site coverage requirements. Uh, and the petitioners would contend that the new structure would not adversely affect the neighborhood. It's an appropriate location and site for this use, not create any nuisance or hazard to vehicles or pedestrians. And adequate and appropriate facilities are provided for the proper operation of the pro proposed use. And our argument also would be it would not constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood. There would be no substantial increase in noise, traffic, fumes, odors, congestion, or the like. And we'd ask that you grant the special permit this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kroll. I think we should be listening to the interim town uh, planner. Uh, yes, good evening and thank you. Uh, the health department has no issues or concerns with the proposal as shown. Uh, they do note that if the planning board approves the plan, then the new septic system must be installed prior to a certificate of occupancy issuance. Uh, fire police had no issues. DPW had no concern. Uh, when I provided you with this uh, staff report, the town engineer had not weighed in. Uh, he and I spoke verbally and he has no concerns. Uh, as far as myself, I have no issues or concerns with the application as submitted. Um, I do recommend the following conditions. Uh, the first is the accessory structure is not an accessory apartment pursuant to section 325-2 word uses and definition. And that would be the definition of dwelling single family with an accessory apartment as there is no kitchen. Um, the second is all Board of Health requirements shall be met, including that a new septic system must be installed prior to a certificate of occupancy issuance. See uh, the third. There shall be no rental or letting of these bedrooms. The next is any changes of the use or changes to the plan may be subject to further planning board review. And lastly, that the um, special permit be recorded at the registry of deeds. And that is all I have. Very good. 
Any uh, comments from the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, Attorney Crowell, I do have a question. You knew that I would. <laughs> um, I think you mentioned you going, the existing structure has two parking spaces and that's going to be made into habitable space and the new addition is going to have two uh, garage spaces and I'm asking for clarification on that because I see only one um, car size garage door on the proposed right elevation. I'm looking at 8.4 and it looks like the, the barn doors were on the back of the current garage structure are going to be moved saved and moved over to there and i'm just wondering are we going from two garage spaces to one and if so is there going to be enough room um for the driveway and setbacks and so so forth um if additional cars are going to have to be outside rather than inside the garage Thank you. I'm going to defer to Mr. Nicola on that one. I may, uh, he, he, he drew up the plans and I may have misread the plan as far as the two, two car garage. So I'll defer to Dale on that. Sure. So uh, we are going to a one car garage. So as, as noted on the plan, there is just a one car garage and we are taking those double bar doors and moving them next to the uh, garage door so that they can uh, have some boat storage. Uh, boat storage. And, and the existing turnaround and um, new driveway, if you will, placement will allow for additional cars if needed. It does, and that's all noted on the site plan. That's also a part of the septic plan. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chadwick. Did I hear uh, uh, Mr. McFarland? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, not maybe that, that anybody cares, but um, this is exactly the setup that I have at my home, except that um, I have I have a two car garage uh, rather than a one car garage. But uh, the addition and the second floor and all the rest of it uh, is what I I put onto my home. And we approved it. <laughs> As a matter of fact. A prior board did approve. I can't. I can't wait to see it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're welcome yeah. to come and take a look at it. <laughs> Great. Are you going to serve refreshments? No, no. Do we have any other comments from the board or questions for Mr. Nick yeah, and Mr. Uh, Paul? This is Dave Harris. I have a, you know kind of a comment in the packet there was a loose drawing called a01 which uh, appears to be kind of a site plan and, and it shows the driveway serving the new garage in the wrong location there's also a, a, a drawing that says refer is referred to as the Wong w-o-n-g residence which shows it properly so it's just the it's just a little confusing. I don't know if everybody has the same documents I do. That's the name of the family, W-O-N-G. And, and, if, and if I might, uh, oh, yes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, yes. the stamped site plan, which is the site and sewage disposal plan prepared by J.M. O'Reilly, is the official plan because it is the stamp plan and i do believe that is the correct plan okay and, uh, you're probably i'm sure you're right charlene but i'm just you just curious that this other site plan was in the packet you may not have it because you don't have all the documents with you but uh i just wondered uh if if there's something of of importance <laughs> on the on the drawing ao.1 that is relevant to our our action right if i if i could just comment on that so so what what we did is um before we had the site plan done we did that site plan as part of the architectural plans just so that we were sure that everything would meet the zoning requirements in terms of setbacks and, and site coverage 
So that, that was done as part of the plan package prior to John O'Reilly doing his uh, stamp uh, site accepted plan. Okay. Thank so you. For that confusion. No problem. Thank you. I'm easily confused. All you have to do is throw a couple of wrong, strange drawings in and it confuses me. <laughs> It sounds like we got somebody, some music going. Uh, is there anybody else on the board that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Then perhaps we should uh, make a motion to close the hearing. Do you want to see if there's any public comment? Oh, yes, public comment. Excuse me. Yes, I'd like to make a comment. Can you hear me? My name is Doug Grant. I'm in a butter. Yes, hello, Mr. Grant. Thank you. Uh, your address, please. 26 Bayview Road. Thank so you. We have bought the property just to the east. Um, basically, have no problems with it, but as Commissioner Harris mentioned, there were two different site plans that significantly show different driveway patterns there. Um, and also, the, a lot of the structure says proposed that's no longer proposed it's been completed the pool is done um, it doesn't show the existing driveway whether that stays or removed um, or whether the existing garage is within the house is remaining or whether that's being removed and i guess i'd also like to inquire as to when they plan to do this construction mr cole go ahead dale uh, yeah, so the, the pool was installed, I don't know, probably, uh, they, they completed that probably about two and a half or three months ago. Uh, we, own, we own a contract for that directly. Um, there's, no, there's no part of the existing garage that is being demolished. So all we're doing is um, remodeling the existing structure and adding on to the right-hand side of it. So the... the I guess when I say existing structure, I mean the main house um, that did have a garage on it. Um, will there be a driveway going to that? Because that's not shown on the site plan. So that, that, that garage was removed back when we did remodel in 2010, 2012. So with eight bedrooms, there's only going to be one parking space? There's six bedrooms. Four in the garage, four in the garage, and I assume there's four in the house. Uh, there are there are one, two, I think three in the house actually. Okay. Okay. I, I I guess my point being is that there's a large number of bedrooms and only one parking space. There's no there are two parking spaces in the garage. There's no requirement of actual parking spaces for a house. I mean, you can park on your lawn. You don't have to have a parking area designated. Um, so it's it's whatever works for the people that live there. Basically, we do have to provide a space for the, um, as Mr. Nicola indicated, um, for the addition. And we have one car garage. Plus, plus it appears, it's Joe McClellan, it appears to me that there's room in front of that garage to park at, at least two cars. There is. There's actually room in front of the garage and there's actually room on the left-hand side of the garage. They, they currently have that area for, for parking as well. Does that address your questions, Mr. Grant? Well, will the existing driveway be removed? The existing driveway is going to be altered. There's a large turnaround right now in front of the house that's not shown on the drawings. Mm -hmm. As, as, as Attorney Coral indicated, there's, there's no requirement for residential use to have pot. But there is, there is in the town of Howard, they do, they do look at the driveway as being part of the site coverage. 
So in order for us to meet the site coverage requirements, we had to reduce the size of the driveway. Okay. As I said, I basically have no problems with this, but I don't think the plans reflect what's there or what you're planning on doing. Well, they well the, the site plan you're looking at, as I indicated earlier, doesn't, but the official stamp site plan that was done by John O'Reilly does. That was submitted with the petition. Mm -hmm. That's the AO.1. Okay. Any other Actually, comments? no, it's not. That's the site and sewage okay. disposal plan. Don't get them mixed up, Mr. Call. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'll go to the other one. I guess just my last question is, do you know when construction is planned to occur? Our, our goal is um, as soon as we can, uh, providing we get approval tonight, we'll, we'll have a 30 day appeal period and then uh, uh, probably going to take, uh, I don't know, at least a month or so probably to get the permit. So we only have a 20 day appeal period, 20, 20 working days, right? So no, 20 days, 20 days. About two to two and a half months to start construction. Okay. So you expect it to be substantially complete by summer. Yes. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Any other questions from the public? I think we're good. Shall we close this off? I think I'll need a motion for that. Make a motion. We close the public here. Second. David Harris, second. Very good. Uh, roll call vote. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Dave McFarlane. Vote oh, I think you're on mute, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur I think Routh. we lost Joe. Arthur Routh, aye. Okay. Uh, so what's the will, the wish of the, the board? We have, uh, it's like, um, a couple of, uh, votes we have to take here tonight. Um, just for the record, because we did lose Joe, the decision would need to be unanimous. Okay. Um, I could, I could do, do you want me to go, Duncan? That would be great, Alan. Sure. Uh, make a motion to waive any and all commercial or residential requirements of the bylaw that are not applicable to this petition. David uh, Harris, second. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Of a vote, Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, I. Arthur Ross. Arthur Ross, I. Thank you. Uh, and now to have a vote on findings of fact. Motion to adopt the following findings of fact. One, the property is located within the RL zoning district. Two, the use is consistent with the zoning code and will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Three, the site is an appropriate location for such use. For the accessory, accessory structure shall not contain a stove and therefore it's not a kitchen and it's not an accessory apartment as defined in section 325-2 word usage and definitions dwelling single family with accessory apartment. And five, the proposed parking area will provide sufficient off street parking, which meets the minimum requirements of the town code. And as such, there'll be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians. Do I have a second? David Harris, second. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Roll call vote. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. Dave Harris, aye. Uh, I don't see Joe back. Um, no, no, I just I just got back on. I got screwed up with my phone there. I'm back, and, and I'm an aye. Thank you, Joe. 
Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Thank you. Uh, now we have a vote on a special permit. Yep. Uh, move to approve with the conditions and waivers the use special permit for PB 2020 30, Starlight 4 LL. LP for a residential accessory structure with two additional bedrooms pursuant to the code of town of Harwich section 325 sections 325-9 and dash 51 for property located at 14 Woodland Road map 14 parcel x2-2 in the RL zoning district the approval is based on the fact that the application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval pursuant to the code of town of Harwich with the above findings and following conditions. One, the accessory structure is not an accessory apartment pursuant to section 325-2, board usage and definitions dwelling, single family with accessory apartment and shall not contain the kitchen. Two, all board of health requirements shall be met, including that new septic system must be installed prior to certificate of occupancy issuance. Three, there shall be no, re there shall be no rental or letting of these bedrooms. Four, any changes of the use or changes to the plan may, may be subject to the further planning board review. And five, a special permit decision shall be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. David Harris, second. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Roll call vote. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Thank you, people. Uh, I think that squares that away. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you, Mr. Nicola. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry for the confusion, town planner, about the plan. I saw the stamp on it, and I knew as soon as it came out of my mouth, I said, uh oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> That's what I'm here to keep you honest. Have good holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Uh, now we also have a public hearing on um, PB 2020-31, which is 711 Main Street LLC, Salmo Patel Manager, seeks approval to modify site plan review special permit PB 2019-18 to reduce the number of existing parking spaces by one to accommodate the installation of an enclosed mechanical energy appliance uh, generator at the rear of the building. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich section 325-55. The property is located at 711 Main Street, map 41, parcel D8 on the C-B and Harwich Center Overlay Zoning Districts. Um, we have an indication that this applicant has requested a continuance to our very popular and back by popular demand, January 12th meeting of for taking seating arrangements and probably gonna have food delivered for a stem winding seven hour uh, confab. Um, do I have a motion to uh, for continuance? Move to continue, Joe McFarland. No later than 6.30, no earlier than 6.30. On January 12, 2021. And a second. Peterson, second. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Roll call vote. Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Routes. Arthur Routes, aye. Thank you. Uh, that squares away our public hearings for the evening. Uh, for new uh, for the public meeting, we have uh, new business. Uh, the minutes from December first, which Make a are, uh, included in the packet. Make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Great. Second. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second and a vote. Uh, Duncan Barry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, abstain. Joe McFarland. Aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur Rouse, aye. Okay. 
And looks like we have a request for town snow plowing on Bastom Hollow. PB 2018-13 and PB 2020-12 eastward MBT LLC. Um, who are we going to hear from about this? Susan Ledoux's on. Yep. Can you see me and hear me? Yeah. There you are. Okay. Hi. Good evening. Yeah, I, uh, I submitted a letter and I'm just going to briefly go over the points I made in the letter. And we were here uh, with this request last year. I, I believe Bill Marsh attended the meeting last year requesting this. And so in the last year, uh, it's a similar request to last year, but in the last year, the planning board removed all the lots from the covenant that was in July. Uh, and you're holding security in, in the amount of $13,598 to the completion of just uh, a portion of the sidewalk and then the final asphalt plan. And we are installing the sections of the sidewalk as we build the houses on each lot and complete the associated site work for each house. The road construction has been complete for the last year and the road is in excellent condition. Therefore, there are no issues with the road surface. Three homes on Bascom Hollow have been completed and they're all occupied on a year round basis and two new homes are under construction and they are custom homes. Uh, they're not built homes. And uh, my last point, uh, there are lots of vehicles in and out of the neighborhood um, as far as construction vehicles, delivery trucks and residents. And so we, we were trying to appeal to the board in the town again tonight to just to see if uh, you would uh, take this street on and add it to your snow plow list. Thank you, Ms. Ledoux. Thank you. Uh, comments from the board? I've physically driven up there. I, I, I have no problem make a motion to add it to the snow uh, let's plowing. Let's hear from the town planner. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Let's hear from the town planner. Town planner. So the town engineer, Griffin Ryder, and I uh, reviewed and discussed this request. And at this time, and based on the requirements of section 400-14R of the subdivision rules and regulations, we cannot support this request. Um, section 400-14R states that roadway maintenance, if released from restrictions with regard to sale of lots, um, or buildings on a lot by the posting performance or other security, the applicant shall maintain um, the roadway for vehicular traffic. I won't go on, but because there is still a um, performance guarantee on this uh, road, uh, based on the rules and regulations, um, it is the responsibility of the um, owner applicant to maintain, excuse me, maintain that until such time as they are, um, there is no uh, bond held any longer. So we cannot recommend um, approval of this. Let's sorry, Susan. We were last year, right? I'm sorry? Basically where we were on this last year, as I recall. Last year it was lots being held under covenant. This year there's a performance um, guarantee that is being held by the planning board. Gotcha. And how much is it, please, Charlie? Uh, it's thirteen thousand and change. And and are we the only ones that can release that? You are the only ones who can release that once the work is completed, which it has not happened. And what? Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, what needs to be completed? They need to finish the sidewalks and what else, Susan? I'm sorry. And and actually, it would be oh, just to revise the Asbel plan to show the portion of the sidewalk that remains. Mr. Chairman, a question. Mr. Thank you. Um, we. Um, how close are the two? I think you said, Susan, two houses construction in the last two lots. Was that? Did I hear that right? Yeah, yes, we, there are two houses under construction now. So the sidewalk will be completed with the completion of the site work for those homes. And then we'll have one, two, two lots uh, that have not been sold yet or you know, built on. So oh. that portion of the sidewalk will not be built until those are sold. So there's a total of four lots and or houses currently um, without sidewalks. Correct. 
well, three are lived in and two are under construction. So I would say five. Or, or well, yeah, I, I see what you're saying with the outside walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any other comments? Questions? We have a motion. I don't think I can make a motion. I don't think we can do this from what I hear. Uh, That's exactly right. Based on the rules and regulations, no. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. If, uh, if my wording needs to be corrected. Um, you can do a positive motion, and then if the board chooses not to um, adopt that motion, then you'd vote no. Right. Okay. I think uh, I, I, my motion was going to be um, to deny the request from the applicant based on the um, rules and regulations of section 400-14 R as um, spelled out by the town planner and just motion. Is that acceptable? Colleen? That's fine. And if the board, it needs a second. And if the board agrees, I'll second it. Then okay, you, you would vote in the affirmative. So are we approving the denial? You're you're voting on the motion. Right, so if you, motion, if you support the motion that was made, then you would vote yes. I know right. it's confusing. Is that are we okay with that wording? Yep. Ready to yeah. go ahead? Okay. So Duncan Barry, aye. Mr. Chadwick? Craig Chadwick, aye. David Harris. Uh, I'm not sure I understood the motion. I thought the motion was to approve the request. <laughs> No, he did. He his motion was to deny it, which is a, oh, an I'm acceptable sorry, I, motion. Uh, David it, Harris, aye. Okay. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Rouse. Arthur's Arthur not Rouse, eligible. Aye. Oh, Arthur's not eligible. All right, sorry. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. I must have missed that line here. Sorry about that, folks. No, I forgot to put it in. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but looks like our hands are tied. Um, yep, that's fine. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have, have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye, now, Susan. Bye. The 2020 annual report. Oh, what do we have with regard to our 2020 annual report? Uh, through that, is this kind of a a summation of uh, what we have to that we make to the uh, board of selectmen? Essentially, um, it would be what's printed in the annual town report. Okay. And also the presentation you'd make to the selectmen, which is sometime in February. Charlene, don't we ordinarily do this uh, do this motion at the town meeting? No. Okay. All right. So it looks as though we have some flexible numbers that will, as you say, uh, may change because the filing deadline isn't until next week, right? Right. Or, so, can we do a provisional vote on this, or should we circle back in January? Or you can it... circle back in January. It's usually with with the whole COVID thing, everything has been pushed. Usually, you have your uh, annual meeting with the selectmen in like October or November. Um, those have all been pushed to next early next year. Um, usually, the the actual written reports are due for the annual excuse me, report um, the first week in January. I think those are going to be pushed up, so you do have some time. Okay. Well, so I you mean, don't this, need to this, take any action this evening if you don't want to. Okay. I was going to say, I think we can probably 
make this a, and it looks, this is be the last meeting of the calendar year and is the 12th the first meeting of the of next calendar year yes it is okay and did we have a um calendar or board schedule for the 2021 available you all approved that on the either the end of october or beginning of a while october. ago yeah yeah, yeah. And I, don't, I, I didn't put it in my usual file uh online file thing so i don't have it is the 12th or first meeting of the year it is okay so we can hold this off until the second yep. meeting yes okay. and if you need um a copy of the schedule for next year it is on the town website under the planning board okay um the next item is the west harwich dcpc um the guidelines uh, if you'd like i can give you a quick summary of where we're going with that um we had a meeting with uh charlene and three two members of the cape cod commission actually there were three three members we've had and we've actually had two meetings and um, this is all to set up the design guidelines, which are, we're going to be as a, uh, we're going to try and get this into the next um, town meeting as a rider on the special district so that there are design guidelines in place. Um, the commission is working with us to develop some visuals and we're going to have a very compact, uh, very compressed set of guidelines um, hopefully, you know, something that's visual and not too wordy is going to be better than something that's wordy and not too visual. So we're in the process of getting that hammered out. And I think we're going to have, um, uh, before the end of this calendar year, we'll have uh, kind of a brief for the commission about the kind of visuals we'd like to have. Um, am I missing anything, Charlene? Nope, that was perfect. And um, one of the things we did discuss is possibly having a um, a work session with the board that's not part of a regular meeting so you can actually kind of dive into it and have a better conversation if we try and put this on the agenda on the 12th it'll well yeah you don't want to do that right very good so do we have any other briefings uh, you know i think we would have to mr chairman yes mr mcfarland uh, Charlene, do we have any any news or any suggestion as to your replacement? Uh, no, sir. So, uh, I mean, have they even interviewed anybody or? It hasn't been posted yet or advertised. And 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 who who, who should we? There are discussions be... going on, but they. It's government. It takes time. Right. Oh, I understand. But uh, in the final Mr. analysis, Chairman, the, the administrator makes that appointment, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Mr. Chadwick. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I think I, and other board members, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I, uh, somewhere the, the um, interim town manager was going to take into consideration not necessarily a straight replacement for the town planner as current job description is written, but looking at the, the whole of government, if you will, or, and maybe decide to um, put forward some possible changes. Do I have that right? There is a, there are discussions about changing ever so slightly the job description and possibly the title. To me, it's semantics but it's something that needs to be negotiated with the union because it is a union position. And it's my understanding that that's where the conversation is right now is, is with the union. So, oh, so you are in the union, Charlie? Not anymore. Cause I'm retired, but yeah. Oh, I understand, I understand that. But I mean, when you run the job, you were in the union. Yes. I didn't realize that. So nothing would be posted. No job posting would be created until such time as that particular right. item is resolved. Oh yeah, he's exactly. got he's got to resolve that with the union. Yep. That's that's from an old union lawyer. <laughs> I was just going to say that Mr. McFarland. <laughs> you would know better than anybody. Yeah, yeah, I, I I now understand. I did not understand the status. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. 
Thank you. Very good. Well, I want to, uh, as we wind up this meeting, I want to thank everybody for all their effort under these adverse circumstances. It certainly will be a memorable year when we go back and spend our evenings in 2025 reliving the, the ten <laughs> of those heartwarming meetings um, and play them for our friends and loved ones. But uh, thank you all. I appreciate the effort on everybody's part on behalf. Uh, everybody's part, and, and uh, I know I speak for, uh, I'm sure, Mary, who's not here, and Bill. Um, a special camaraderie here, and I look forward to, again, being back in the meeting room together with everybody up in the Griffin room and doing this the way it should be done, face-to-face. -face. But thanks, everybody, and um, I hear a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. We need a roll call? Yes, I you think do. so. Uh, Duncan Berry, aye. Craig Chadwick. Chadwick, aye. David Harris. David Harris, aye. Joe McFarland. Joe McFarland, aye. Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson, aye. Arthur Rouse. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. And a good, and see you next year. Yep. See you. Yep. Bye.